If you want Pooja to stay in your house, then I have some conditions which you have to listen to. Hereafter, you will maintain a distance of five feet from that guy. Good morning and welcome back again. Uh, this is uh, uh, K24 Alpha G and we are on Wellness Wednesday celebrating the Men's Health Week, just going through what um, we as men go through as far as um, various uh, diseases are concerned. But the two major ones that definitely affect us the most, alcoholism, which uh, Mr. Newton Kenyanju is here to talk about, uh, and of course, uh, prostate cancer. Actually, the actor was just telling me right now that the moment you're a man, already on the path to prostate cancer. But he also explained a couple of things which I want us to recap. Dr. Ari, again, uh, welcome. Yes. You said that you could be having a high PSA yes. um, count, yes. but doesn't necessarily mean that you know you have uh, cancer. Yes. You could also have an enlarged prostate, prostate. and that happens when yes. you get to like the ages of Mr. Vincent here. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think, uh, uh, just like I told you before, yeah. A high PSA does not mean you have cancer. Right. We said PSA is prostate specific antigen. But it, yeah, it's prostate specific antigen. Mm. It is prostate specific, mm -hmm. but it is not cancer specific. All right. So if you have a high PSA, that does not nail you mm. on uh, prostate cancer. All right. And that is why we go from there. We do a digital rectal examination. Mm. We do a, a rectal, I mean, a prostate biopsy, right. just to make a, 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 a diagnosis. Mm. So what are the other causes that may cause a PSA to go up? Okay. The main one is infection. Infection. If you have a prostatitis where the prostate sometimes get infected, mm -hmm. sometimes urine actually leaks back into the prostate. Okay. The PSA go up. And what could be infecting this prostate? It is a bacteria. Just, that, just like uh, it's usually bacteria. Mm -hmm. and normally, like you got, get like a UTI. All right. A UTI will actually give you a high PSA. Okay. So and uh, just like uh, the patient we have here on air. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like he said that he went to the oncologist. Yes. The first person you are supposed to go to when it comes to prostate check is supposed to be the urologist. Okay. Now the urologist, you, yes. yes, is the one who is supposed to refer you to the oncologist. All right. Because he has to decide if you have early prostate cancer, mm. like you have a, his PSA at 2006. Yes. yes. Or whatever date you said, the first time it was where checked. it was nine, yes. you would have been cured of prostate cancer. What we would have done, would have done a radical prostatectomy. We remove the whole prostate mm -hmm. and then we cure you of prostate. Because mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. the prostate cancer is organ confined. Mm -hmm. Yes. You remove the entire prostate. You remove the entire prostate. <laughs> then you join the urethra <laughs> okay. to the bladder. Or directly. Di yeah, directly. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have the prostate anymore. But isn't the... I'm assuming the prostate is very important the, in my body, isn't it? No, the prostate is very important in your body, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to uh, reproduction. Okay. But you realize that prostate cancer comes well after you have had enough children. <sighs> but that does not prevent okay. you from your usual <laughs> sexual, sexual activity. Sexual activity mm. that, that you still maintain them. Okay. Now, but I will be then do maybe in a kwanga nyumbani. You, you may have a reduced sexual function. But with the time it will pick up. Mm. Because as we operate, of course, we interfere with a bit of the nerves. Okay. But again, you have to choose. Do you want to live, uh, live or do you want to die with the prostate cancer? I want to remain a bull. <laughs> <laughs> no matter I what happens. No, Paul, you know, you, you're joking. I have a patient, yes. and I'm sure he'll hear me uh, from here. Yeah. He has a PSA of 258. 258. 258. He came and saw me and he told me now uh, with the treatment for, for that kind of advanced prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. once you are having a PSA of 250, mm -hmm. already your, pro, your, your, your disease is uh, out of the prostate. Okay. It's actually already either Spreading. locally invasive mm -hmm. or metastatic. Metastatic wow. means it has gone to other areas. And I told him the treatment, the first line treatment for that kind of prostate is actually hormonal treatment. Okay. What we call hormonal withdrawal treatment, mm -hmm. where we can either give you injection, tablet, or even remove your testes, just to withdraw the testosterone. Do we have remember, to remove anything? <laughs> remember, I told you earlier. <laughs> Newton is laughing. <laughs> yes. About 85-90% of the prostatic cells, they live on the testosterone. 
Okay. So once you withdraw the testosterone, mm -hmm. they actually die off. So the testosterone, this is the hormone that the prostate produces. The, 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 the testes produce the testosterone. Oh, okay. The prostate feeds on the testosterone. testosterone. Okay. So once you withdraw the testosterone, mm -hmm. the PSA actually crashes down mm -hmm. to about uh, zero point. Like he'll tell you, about yes. zero point nine mm -hmm. he had. Doctor, if you remove my testicles, then yes. that's it. Mimi, I can't reproduce anymore. Now, the moment we start you on hormonal treatment, mm -hmm. then your sexual functions it collapses. And by collapse, you mean they die? They die. If you are having sexual function and you are on hormonal treatment, yes. then the treatment is not effective. So we withdraw the testosterone, you lose your sexual function. Now, the difference between cast uh, what we call surgical castration and medical castration uh -huh. is that for the uh, medical castration, mm. we give you injections. Mm -hmm. If at one time you decide you want a sex holiday, yes, excuse me for using that uh, terminology, mm. yeah. then you can go on holiday. Yes, at that time mm -hmm. your PSA will will stay there. Okay. Then later alone, when we mm. find it's going up, mm. then we reintroduce the drug. But okay. once you remove your testes, mm -hmm. then it is if you. permanent. Mimi na ni need to Yes. Hey, Daktari. <laughs> There's a problem here. Um, we'll, get, we'll get back. We'll get back to you in a minute. I just want to go back to Vincent. Okay. Um, so, Vincent, for you, when they diagnosed you now, okay, Sasa, my friend, ni cancer. What was the treatment? Did they remove anything? Now, this was discussed between me and my oncologist. Right. And uh, we zeroed in on uh, radiotherapy mm -hmm. plus hormonal therapy. All right. They started with the radiotherapy after giving 35 sessions. All right. Or they have got a term for it. I call it sessions. All right. The easiest word I can remember. Mm -hmm. Then they started hormonal therapy. Okay. Which was one injection every three months <laughs> for 18 months. Okay. One injection every month? Every three months. Oh, every three months. There were six of them. Okay. In my tummy. Okay. The PSA dropped. 0 0.9. Wow, from the 148. Yes. Okay. As uh, the doctor has just mentioned, mm -hmm. during that period I was taking hormonal therapy, mm -hmm. my libido went down, oh. desire for sex went down. Okay. Now, during this period, mm -hmm. when I now finished uh, treatment, mm -hmm. I stopped using the injection. Hormone, hormone, hormonal therapy, mm -hmm. my sex desire came up. Okay. My PSA began rising again. It caused me concern from 0 0.9 mm -hmm. to 5, mm -hmm. 7.5, 9, 15, 22. I also guess, am I going back to where I started? Mm -hmm. I went to see my oncologist who prescribed for me another hormonal treatment, oh. know, which is now tablet called Castodex. All right. I'm on that now. Okay. And has your PSA changed since? I've not measured. After finishing this treatment mm -hmm. on tablets, I'll go and measure. Okay. All right. And report back to the doctor. All right. That's the stage. Hey. All right. For your question. All right. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around uh, the fact that... Uh, if today I'm diagnosed, and God forbid, because mimi hakuna kitu munatua kwa mwili yangu, by the way. Iyo. Hakuna kitu munatua. Let's go to a gentleman who um, hasn't uh, suffered from all these injections and, you know, having his prostate removed. Now, now before you go to him, yeah, there is something which I have to mention. All right. During, during the treatment, mm -hmm. uh, I was psychology, uh, I was at a very big uh, depression. I don't know what they call depression. Mm -hmm. or, mm, I was de mentally disturbed. All right. Because of stress. Mm -hmm. The stress I had was from the start of the treatment. I had only one granddaughter. Yes. Who was going to form one. Okay. And uh, she told me she learned from the teacher. 
that when you have cancer, you die. Wow. So she was also so, so you she were told me, on her behalf. I'm now going for from one, mm. Babu. When I come back, shall I find you dead? Oh, she. So that I said no. Mm. When she went, she picked pneumonia and died. So sorry. So my treatment almost came to a standstill. So that stress can affect treatment. I had to mention that because mm. if you are getting treated and you're having a stress, mm. sort out the stress first. I'm so sorry about your granddaughter, but um, Dr. he has just mentioned that uh, obviously he was stressed because the granddaughter was stressed and then uh, uh, in addition she died. Yes. And it obviously multiplied the stress. Yes. And he says that it affected his treatment. So yes. that means but even the medicine that he was receiving wasn't working or what exactly was happening in his case? No, I don't know. Did you stop the treatment? I didn't stop the treatment. Yes. But I was feeling bad mm -hmm. all the time. So you despaired? I, I, when, no, I didn't. I continued the treatment. Mm. But the feeling I had before the death, yes. I, was, I felt I was responding well. Yes. Okay. I was relaxed. Mm. Yes. Even the, the, the people from my parents' magazine yes. visited me and said I was fighting cancer with positivity. Mm. All right. That positivity de declined. Right. Okay. <clears throat> That's what. So what I was feeling before that, mm. I was feeling better. After the death, I was feeling bad. So I thought, mm. as a layman, I was not responding to the treatment. Okay. Well, I, I think what he is uh, alluding to. Yes. First and foremost, once you are diagnosed with cancer, whatever type of cancer, there is the initial reaction of shock. You get shocked, and then you deny. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you are put on treatment. Radiotherapy is not a very easy treatment. Radiotherapy and the chemotherapy, the, the hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy. Mm. Usually they are very expensive. I'm sure they also affect his pocket. Mm. So you can see this is person who has, uh, because many people think when you are diagnosed with cancer is a death sentence. Yeah. And that is already in your mind. And there is also what other people are saying. What his daughter is, his granddaughter is saying. Mm. And then the radiotherapy has side effects. The radiotherapy itself and the hormonal therapy, they will give you also immunosuppression. Yeah. So the effect of radiotherapy for 35 sessions. And you know, he gets radiotherapy from Monday to Friday. He rests for the weekend, mm. Saturday, Sunday, and starts over again on Monday for 35 days. Yeah. So that goes almost up to two months. Mm. So that effect of the radiotherapy will definitely put him down. Even if he had not lost his uh, uh, grandchild, uh, child, mm. he still have had those side effects of the treatment. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm. Uh, again, Paul MZ, uh, that's, yes. that must have taken a toll. Okay. Uh, Newton, yes. for, you, mm -hmm. for you to decide to walk, in, mm -hmm. uh, to walk into a rehab, mm -hmm. you did mention while we were off here that you had a very strong support system. Yes. Your parents, yes. Uh, your mother, your aunties, and uh, I don't know, sisters. They, they encouraged you to, to go to this, but did you do it willingly? Um, it was their constant pushing, to end the rehab, to end the rehab. Personally, it was a personal decision. I decided uh, I needed that help mm. because uh, it had reached to that point where now my drinking had become unmanageable. So uh, I told them uh, what, you, what you guys have been suggesting since mm. I don't have anything to lose anyway. Yeah. Let me give it a shot and see if it will work for me. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, now when uh, we went to this facility called Serenity. Okay. Place, uh, where now when I was, it's a 90 day program. Mm -hmm. When I was in there now, uh, actually for the first week it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Because you can imagine uh, you're used to drinking. your uh, drink in the evening before you sleep and now comes uh, there is only maybe a cup of tea in the evening when you ask for one or a, a cup of milk yeah so for the first week it was difficult but uh, i settled in very well and decided you know what i need to do this for my own sake and for my future mm. 
and now in the program that's when now you get to interact with very many uh, guys mm. and now get an understanding that these people the issue is not now like really drugs or, yeah. or addiction there are uh, mental issues which people have neglected so much there's always that underlying issue which people try to run away from right yeah and for you what was it what was uh, that actually it's a series of events mm. i believe we cannot exhaust them in this show okay but they are underlying issues because i interacted with uh, also other other guys in there mm -hmm. the guys who have issues issues that led them to uh, maybe, uh, uh indulging in drugs mm. uh, and and basically when i was there, in there at least i got to maybe i used to follow the news very well and uh, a week passes and not a week would pass without hearing that maybe someone has done something bad like uh, maybe uh, killed killed suicide yes mm. those cases of uh, homicide and femicide have become so much in our society and mm. this is because i think we as a country have neglected mental health right yeah it's something that we need to pay a lot of concern into because these underlying issues they are the ones which uh, lead people towards doing those crazy things that they are doing and uh, also you see uh, we, as a country we've tried very much yeah truth be told in terms of education mm. the kenyan system is recognized internationally it was just oh. the other day yeah. that we had uh, our team from strathmore law mm. school uh beating the harvard the harvard guys yeah that shows a lot actually there's no other country in africa that has ever beaten beat harvard uh, yes yes of of law. Law. <laughs> yeah so uh education we've invested very well yeah if it is uh even in terms of infrastructure even though it is uh it is uh, it, infrastructure is yeah, yeah not the best mm -hmm. but we are also trying there's something actually newton you mentioned um mm -hmm. about rehab and i i want to recap on it and just understand because mm -hmm. there's probably i've never been to rehab okay. um, but, but maybe someone who's going through drug addiction mm -hmm. alcohol addiction and mm -hmm. they're thinking i really need to go to rehab but nasianga rehab or kuna makarao or sg unafungiwa is is that true are you are you like locked in a room uh, with guys dressed in white eh kila asubuhi wanakuja na kudunga sindano juu unafunganishwa chini unafanywa mambo or is it a place you walk in and walk out whenever you want no there is nothing of the sort mm -hmm. such as uh, being locked in a place mm -hmm. unless uh, maybe you are because at some point people become very aggressive with their management maybe they have to consider maybe locking you for some hours mm -hmm. after which they for you to come down for you to come down okay after which they they will talk to you yes. and tell you we are doing this because of this and this so mm. it's not uh, personally i had that perception yeah yeah are you going there being locked utafungiwa yeah, kuna kutoka yeah, security <laughs> so for the thing is uh, for that program to work very well uh, most uh, centers have taking that approach of ensuring that you're in the facility mm -hmm. for the 90 days the full 90 days yeah all right and it becomes more effective because when you're walking in and out then uh, you cannot have that full concentration yes yeah so there's nothing like being coerced as people mm -hmm. put it it's yeah. a very nice program mm -hmm. as a matter of fact if you think of it in in a positive way in your life you never get a vacation for three months yeah yeah yes. because <laughs> the actor is agreeing with you yeah yes. yeah because there's nowhere where you go food is there mm. yeah, you wake up maybe go for those classes mm. go to the gym mm -hmm. relax mm. you you'll never have such an opportunity in your life okay and if you're doing it for the most important asset in your life which is your brain mm. then go for it all right yeah and it's something that i feel we need to embrace because we are losing it Yes, can just you. one more question again about rehab still mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i want guys to fully understand that yes. it's not a prison mm -hmm. um so there are sessions um but there's a time you're allowed to just chill so is there like at a specific time table wake up at six go for uh, i don't know prayer session yeah. uh, you know bible study and so on and so forth then kuna mm -hmm. time ya lunch then mm -hmm. gym then nini mm -hmm. ama it's just a place where you can meet a psychologist whenever mm -hmm. you want to or a psychiatrist whenever you feel like okay in this facilities mm -hmm. uh the one I was in they have a program okay where you are supposed to have woken up at a particular time mm -hmm. uh, of your choosing or they are choosing they are choosing okay. which is really not because you don't want to be in a place where you 
you're waking up at 11 and then after you come out of that place it becomes very difficult to you now you don't get a chance you cannot i cannot manage to wake up at seven all right yeah so we uh, wake up at around uh, uh, seven go for a morning devotion after which we have breakfast and then uh, maybe classes follow actually there's a program which is supposed to be followed mm. but it's very flexible it's not uh, anything that uh, mm. you cannot manage okay yeah so, so. Mm -hmm. we shall <coughs> sorry we shall still get back to you uh, on the same issue doc um for other can for other cancers that also affect uh, affect men because I, I i well i was shocked with the first uh, statement yes. that you made that you said not all cancers yes. are uh, fatal yes and you did mention that you know with prostate cancer for instance yes uh, there is a way, like for him, yes. he's managing it. I mean, yes. since 2014, he was diagnosed, he's looking strong. Yes. Uh, so, with, with prostate cancer, you want to tell me that if today I were diagnosed with uh, uh, prostate That's, cancer, I can yeah. live a full life? Okay, on, on that note, uh, we, we have issues about screening prostate cancer. Mm. And that has been, he's still a debate yeah. in the whole world, even today. Mm. The Americans and the British... Uh, cannot agree okay. on whether we should uh, screen for prostate cancer. And when I mean screening, mm -hmm. I mean you walking into the, I mean somebody going into the community mm -hmm. and doing PSAs. Okay. So the problem is with prostate cancer. Yeah. The Americans believe in screening. And therefore they have reduced the, the number of deaths in America mm -hmm. over the last uh, 10, 15 years. All right. Uh, the British will say, no, we cannot scream. Mm. And the reason they say we cannot scream, mind you, I'm not talking about patients with symptoms. Yeah. If a patient it's has symptoms, at random, at yes. random you have yes. no problem, you want a PSA done. Mm. The argument with the British, yes. which is correct, mm -hmm. is that uh, not all prostate cancers are fatal. According to the grading system, mm -hmm. there are some cancers that actually you just don't treat. You just watch over them. The problem with treatment mm -hmm. is that treatment has a lot of morbidity. Morbidity means there are other side effects of the treatment. Mm -hmm. If you do, for example, the radical prostatectomies, okay. patients come in with erectile dysfunction, mm -hmm. they have urine incontinence and those guys. So the quality of life sometimes is not very good after the mm -hmm. treatment. So that is why we want, we do not want to diagnose cancers that do not need treatment. Okay. And the reason why those cancers don't need treatment is mm -hmm. because they are not aggressive. Mm -hmm. They are just innocent by standards. And for your information, yes. if all of us lived to 100 years mm. and we <laughs> took our prostates from the autopsy, yeah. for autopsy, yeah. you will find that about 90 to 100 uh, percent mm -hmm. of those patients have prostate cancers. If we all live to the ages of, of 100, 100 years. And we took, uh, we took all those prostates mm. to the pathologist to mm. slice them up. Watapata cancer. Watapata prostate cancers. So mm. there are cancers mm. that you actually die with mm. other than from. Wow. So that is why we do not want to overdiagnose the prostate cancers. Mm. Prostate cancers, like I said, they are different. And other than the breast cancer, mm. is actually the only other cancer that we treat with hormones. Okay. These are those you just push in radiotherapy and chemotherapy mm. to start with. Mm -hmm. So there is that actually that debate. Okay. And that is why we don't want to encourage everybody to get a PSA done. There's a specific question now I was asked by one of our crew members, I think it was yesterday. Yes. Uh, and this, they, they, they asked me that, movie. is it true that if uh, uh, you're not sexually active at least 21 times a month, <laughs> Chances are utapata, utapata prostate cancer ukifika a certain age. Uh, when, when, when that question is asked in a forum like this and other forums, mm -hmm. when we get a chance to preempt it, we are happy to do that. Right. The reason being, mm -hmm. let's say you are, your dad is 65 years mm -hmm. or somebody else is dad right. and he lost his uh, wife some times ago. Mm -hmm. By saying that uh, if they stay without sex, mm -hmm. they are going to have prostate cancer, mm -hmm. then it will be misleading those uh, people. Mm -hmm. Because you, when you bring in a, new, a young girl into the household, right. then it will have its own consequences. Yes. But the truth is, mm -hmm. uh, many people say that, but there is no scientific data that sexual activity 
uh, controls uh, the, the, the whatever, the cause of prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So there is no mm. data. All right. Yes. Oh, travel messia. <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, Mr. Vincent, just in a, uh, a minute or so, yes. do you think that your lifestyle, probably before you were diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer, might have contributed to you having it? This is just a random act of God that got you here. You know, I would not say that, mm. that my past lifestyle mm -hmm. could have caused my cancer. Okay because there are quite a number of people living the same lifestyle mm -hmm. I was living who are not having cancer. Okay. So there's no proof. There's no proof. No. All right, Dr. do you agree with him? Yeah, I, 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 one thing I would say about that, mm. uh, it is a fact. Okay. We do not know what causes cancer, mm -hmm. whatever cancer. Mm -hmm. But what we say, there is what we call a risk association. Uh, association. Risk association. Yes. Okay. Like for prostate cancer, they say people who eat a lot of meat, mm. for example, mm. uh, with the fats and what we call the unsaturated fats, mm -hmm. they have a high risk of getting prostate cancer. All right. Uh, people who, who do exercises, people who eat a lot of vegetables, mm -hmm. have lower chance of prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. But we do not know what the causes. main cause. No, 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 no. We All don't. right. All right. Yes. So, guys, if you're very sexually active, usijali, you're safe. <laughs> uh, Vincent, uh, not, not Vincent, sorry, uh, Mr. Newton, mm -hmm. um, closing remarks um, for someone who's Excuse probably watching. Before you close the remarks. Right. No, the doctor is here. Yes. There's something disturbing my mind here. Uh -huh. Now, most people with the prostate cancer, men in particular, uh -huh. suffer from what I call fear and a loss of hope. Mm -hmm. And I suspect, I may not be right, that this stress may cause more death mm -hmm. than the cancer itself. the cancer itself. Yeah. So I always tell people, or my, my men folk, uh -huh. to be open and begin complaining when they've got a problem. Okay. Not to be silent. Mm. Not to and die up. silently. Yeah. They I give women a credit. They know how to make noise when they're in trouble. <laughs> They know how to share their yes. sexuality yes. problems yes. Yes. Yeah. with their colleagues and other mm. people. Men do not want to share their sexuality. Thank you very much. And I suspect mm. most men lose their life because of that, okay. not because of cancer. It's very true. I have one very critical example. And my colleague, we had a cancer survivor also, who was told he was going to be on hormonal therapy uh -huh. and he was told of the consequences. And he told the doctor that I have a young wife. Uh -huh. I cannot suppress my sexual activity for 18 months. Yeah. No, I'm not taking it. So what happened to Kufe? And he died. As a happy man. And he died. Very interesting choice there. Um, unfortunately, guys, that's the end. Um, that's all the time we had. Newton, um, for anyone who wants to go to therapy, uh, to rehab at least now they know that everything is fine uko si jala sindio all right thank you very much for that unfortunately guys we come to the end of the show remember this particular sunday is uh, father's day tafadhali get something